I don't know whether uh, I don't know that one I wouldn't touch though. I think we'll get rid of that one. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's yours. No, 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 no. no. Sir. Because somebody I'll put it over there. Uh, Yeah, no.
so we'll take a picture. Maybe ask the leaders too. Yes, yes. yes. Take it? Okay. Good. Yes.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Beautiful people. Beautiful people. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontide, Jesus, 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 sun goes down. One more time, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the sun goes down. Jesus is everywhere. Jesus, Jesus in your heart, would you say amen? amen? Jesus is near neighbor, would you say smile at each other? And Christ in you, greet me. Christ in me, greet you. That we are Christ's people. All right, welcome back. We're going to invite uh, Scott Carson, District Superintendent, to lead the afternoon prayer. Let us settle together. Good afternoon, Bishop. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, friends. It's good to see you today. Let's bow for a word of prayer, shall we? Precious God, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for the chance that we have to be here, to be together, to give a witness to you and to your love and to your grace to the rest of the state of Wisconsin. Lord, I pray that your spirit can breathe in us and through us, that it can breathe in and through our churches so that we can make a difference for you and for your kingdom. Allow your spirit to come and settle upon us as we gather this afternoon, that we may hear your words, the words that come to us in the voices of one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to uh, just highlight once more, um, many of your churches have already received this book um, by Sue Nelson Kibbe called Floodgates. I want to share with you that uh, this book is made possible for our annual conference through the very generous gift of several people who are members of our churches who believe in the future of United Methodist Church and believe in what God is doing in our midst. This is one of the most significant books that I have read within the last two years. And I hope that you will, if, you, if your church has not yet picked this up, that you will head on over to where Don Greer is over at that table and pick up your copy of Floodgates. Thank you very much. Thank you. More than 100 books is waiting for the church that will pick it up. And thank you, Scott, and thank you for those generous donors to bring that book available for the whole church. We have a first day, we had the floor, the, uh, the motion that our brother Terry Dignan did it, and then implementation team researched it and, and conference rules, so now their findings, so I'm gonna ask uh, secretary to read it, that portion, so we can settle. Yesterday at the time the budget was presented, Terry Dignan presented a motion that would change the budget uh, by deleting funds for retiree clergy health insurance premiums and reallocating that money in a variety of ways. And the Implications Committee has submitted a written report. The Implications Committee has reviewed the motion and determined it to be procedurally out of order because of conference policy 120.1.6, which says that the Wisconsin Annual Conference will fund retiree Medicare supplement premiums up to 50% for qualified participants based on years of service. They also noted the following financial implications if the motion were to have been approved. One, 
The motion states the amount of $595,251. However, the amount actually included in the 2018, 2018 proposed budget is $583,693. The only portion that could be reallocated is $300,000 of apportionment funds. Three, we would lose the East Wisconsin Pension Trust grant of $100,000, which is earmarked for retiree health benefits. The grant is contingent upon the Wisconsin Annual Conference providing apportionment support for retiree health benefits. It must be requested annually. And four, the amount of $183,693 is withdrawn from joint board endowment funds designated specifically for retiree benefits. These funds cannot be redirected to other ministries. And that is the report of the Implications Committee on Terry Dignan's motion. All right, and thank you, Dr. Terry, your witness. And so, any question? No, all right, thank you. Okay, let's move on to our uh, historic question. Is ready? Not everyone. Okay, uh, not everyone. So, all right, we're gonna wait for them. And Jason, we're gonna move on to the DRC organization action item 27. And Sam and Jason to come up. Well, good afternoon, friends. Good afternoon. And good afternoon, Bishop. Good afternoon. My name is Jason Mankey. I am the chair of the Discipleship Leadership Council. And today I am introducing action item number 27, which was not in your pre-conference booklet. It was an insert in your packets. And I would like to start by apologizing that this action item wasn't in your pre-conference booklet and therefore not a part of the discussion in the pre-conference meetings. Um, even though we'd been working on it for a number of months, um, it was not ready by the print deadline. However, I believe that there is enough benefit uh, in this action item for our local churches and our conference um, to proceed at this annual conference, and that's why it was included in your packet. And, and let me explain for a moment why I think this is important for us to move on now. And, and to do so, I need to tell you just one thing about myself. I love the local church. I love what God is doing through our local churches here in this conference. I love seeing my local church catch on fire uh, in their love of God and ministry. And I love hearing amazing stories about what's happening in other churches in our conference as people fall in love with Jesus and as people fall in love with their communities. That's why seven years ago at the 2010 annual conference in La Crosse, when Dan Dick, who was then the director of Connectional Ministries before he ascended, <laughs> when he made a presentation about what is now our current structure, I went up to him and immediately said, count me in. I'd like to be a part of the DLC. Um, because part of its purpose was to resource local churches for ministry, to help the churches of our conference succeed in the ministry that they were about where they were. And since that time, I really think we've had some great successes, creating uh, the stewardship campaign Think Greater, starting Learning Day, which continues um, um, tomorrow, and beginning the Learner Leader Academy, whose goal is to train laity and clergy in uh, ministry um, throughout the conference. It's a year-long training. Uh, this, uh, last year, the training was on small groups. This year, it's on evangelism. If you want to know more about it, come talk to me. Come talk to Sam. Likewise, our conference boards, agencies, and ca caucuses have made strides forward in our work together, working together as a team. 
But over the past seven years, I have found that there are some challenges in our current structure that need to change in, in order to accomplish our goal of revitalizing churches and helping our conference boards and agencies be aligned and effective as we tr strive to accomplish our, our vision of Imagine Wisconsin anew. So we are recommending action item 27 as a revision to our structure. And I say revision because I believe this action item holds on to what works well in our current structure while addressing the challenges that, that we've learned are there. First, the proposal, uh, proposed revision renames our group to match a general church structure. When I recruit people, to be on the DLC or one of the other teams that, that I work with. Um, I spend about 15 to 30 minutes, at least, explaining what the DLC is, that it's not the DLT, it's not the DLET, and all of the other acronyms that I work with. A and then I explain what in the world we do. A and one of the things I say that seems to really help people understand what in the world uh, we're about is, I say, well, the DLC is pretty much the connectional table for our conference. Well, why don't we just name it the connectional table then? Secondly, the proposed revision effectively splits my position in two, not me, my position. Currently, as chair of the Discipleship Leadership Council, I am also chair um, of the Discipleship Leadership Executive Team and the Resource Team Facilitators Group. Now, to tell you what in the world that means without the labels, it means that I'm responsible for working with all of our conference boards, agencies, and caucuses to name how we are going to fulfill our conference vision and then put a strategy together to make it happen. In addition to that, I am responsible for helping our resource teams put together a plan to resource local churches for ministry. In my opinion, uh, after serving in these positions for seven years, these jobs are way too important and require too much time for one volunteer chairperson to do well. So this new revision means that there will be two chairpersons, not one. The chair of the connectional table will be responsible for working with our boards and agencies to name our priorities under our current vision, to put together strategies to realize those priorities, and then to hold all of us accountable for accomplishing them. The chair of the Connectional Table Resource Team will be responsible for working with their team to revitalize local churches and coordinating their work with the Conference Strategy Board, which you heard of earlier, as they start new churches and new ministries so we're all speaking the same language and working from the same playbook and that we're aligned as we revitalize and plant. Finally, we've found it nearly impossible to find the volunteers we need for our current structure to succeed. For instance, and this is just one of the for instances, we currently have nine resource teams and only one has had a chairperson and volunteers to staff it. Only one's had both. Others have only had a chairperson and others have had none. And this, this isn't, wasn't with, uh, uh, for a lack of searching. Therefore, our re revised structure is simplified, naming one team, not nine, responsible for helping revitalize our local congregations, the Connectional Table Resource Team. So like I said, I love the church. I believe the revisions put forth in this action item will allow us to make an even greater difference in the lives of our local churches. And Bishop, I believe that um, this, change will, this change will make us change our conference vision in four years from Imagine Wisconsin anew 
to living Wisconsin anew. With that in mind, I move action item 27. All right, action item 27 is in front of you. You heard it from the current chair for that. Um, are you ready to vote? All right, microphone, yes, microphone three. Microphone three, and then microphone two, yes. I'm Barbara Dick, I'm a lay delegate from Wellspring United Methodist Church in Madison. And I commend the uh, Jason and Sam for looking at ways to make our process more efficient. My concern, and I'm rising to speak against this motion, my concern is that there was not consultation with the existing members that I'm aware of, and I'm one of them, of the um, working groups within the DLC. And I'm also concerned, particularly with line 21, that states there shall be nine to 12 members, including at least one representative, either clergy or lay from each district. That concerns me in terms of laity and clergy equity representation. And I understand there's a, there are reasons for doing that. You want to simplify, you want to keep it um, small, but we have a devotion, a dedication to equal representation by laity and clergy, and I feel very strongly that that is not represented here. It also concerns me that this was presented to us. I understand timing is not always at our, in our control, but this was presented to us at annual conference without adequate time to consider all of the implications of it and all of the changes that it might mean to existing groups. As the acting facilitator for the one team, resource team that is working, um, it would have been really helpful to us to have known that this was being contemplated and we were not consulted on that process. That aside, it is the laity and clergy representation that's particularly of concern to me and the timing of the presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. One speech against. Any four? Jenny Arneson, clergy, yes. Sun Prairie United Methodist, and also the chair of the conference personnel committee. Uh, I agree with uh, having a connectional table restructure. My concern and perhaps friendly suggestion uh, comes when you read lines 10 through 15 with the primary responsibilities of the connectional table. And Seeing those responsibilities, they probably will have implications and impact on conference staffing, either with conference restructure of staff or bringing on new staff. And I would like to see representation from conference personnel at the table versus getting information that will impact our work second or third hand. So, so, so. you're looking for an addition of a member? A member of, of the conference personnel team at the connectional table. I, I am more than open. And I'm not volunteering. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I'm not right. volunteering. So, so <laughs> so, and I would, I, I would receive that as a, if you're willing to state yeah. it. In but event. at least so for our conference personnel could have a chance to put right. a represent. Yeah, if you'd yeah. be willing to put that as a, uh, an amendment, I'd, I'd accept it. Or a friendly that. suggestion, yes. Okay. Yeah, either way, the, Robert's rules ain't my thing. Yeah. Um, so friendly yeah. suggestion, yes. I think that's yeah. still probably friendly amendment that yes, I say. Yes, that's right, what I accepted okay. it. Thank you. Any other discussion? Are you ready to vote? Okay, do, yes, Good. microphone six. My name is Henry Clark, lay member from Prayer to Sac Concordia. I just have a, a question for clarification, All right. please. Speak. On on line six of page one, I'm having a hard time with the, this terminology. The connectional table model is inconsistent. That, I'm sorry, that is a typo, and that's in two places. It's, it's in also, yes, on page two. Yeah, it's supposed to read is consistent. Thank you, that's so what I So it was either going to read is consistent or in alignment, and so we went with is in consistent, which doesn't make sense. So it thank, should be. Thank in you for your clarification. All right, thank you. Are you ready to vote? Okay. All right. Those in favor to, to adopt this uh, action item 27, raise your hands. Lower hand. Those opposed, raise your hand. All right. Lower hand and abstention. Okay. 
Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. This is a change to a conference rule. It requires a two thirds majority. Okay. Let me come back. I think we are required two third vote uh, for the because conference rule change. So let me invite you voting again. Okay, th all those in favor, would you raise your hand? All right, lower hand. Those opposed, raise your hand. Okay, lower hand. On oh, the motion. Okay, abstention. Lower hand. Hmm. I thought it's, a, it's two thirds. I think it's two, still two thirds. So I am adopting as a motion. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so we move on to the next item uh, health and welfare uh, nomination report request for position. Okay. Yes, state. I think that I explained it. Friendly amendment also added it. So, thank you. All right. Nomination, Chair Dominic Israel, you come to the podium. Good afternoon, Bishop, and good afternoon, Conference. Good afternoon. I, I made a good success. I got a 24 names in my volunteer list. So that's, that's good. So thank you. Thank you for all of you who have filled these forms. And we need volunteers. Bishop, I'm here uh, to present two items for consideration of the conference. All right. The first one, the report of the nomination committee. Now, I presented on Friday. Looks like this. that I introduced on Friday. So since Friday, more than a few people have, means 24 people now, have come forward with corrections. So asking you to trust the committee on nominations to make appropriate edits. So Bishop, here I move that this conference may approve the report of no, all nominations. All right, the, uh, the motion to prove their all nomination, which it will be finished it or open yet? It's open. It's okay, open. open. It's what a working, is it? It's called a working document. Okay, working document. All right. <laughs> Are you ready to vote? And those in favor, would you raise your hand? Lower hand. Those opposed, raise your hand. None. And any abstention? None. Yes. Motion the is second carried. item. Yes. Uh, you will all have noticed that there, there remain a number of unfilled positions in this nomination report. Therefore, Bishop, I move that the conference empower the Committee on Nominations to fill any vacancies on conference agencies as appropriate in the coming year. All right, enabling motion in front of you. Those in favor, would you raise your hand? Lower hand, those opposed, raise your hand. Lower hand, any abstention? Motion is carried. Thank you, Dominic. Excellent now, have, job. Yeah. So one, have one, one more request. Okay. As I call you, this is a working document, so you, you can still fill the forms and give it to us. Now, before I uh, go from here, I say thank you to my nomination committee. Uh -huh. You know, the nomination committee. Those uh, who are serving in nomination committee, would you stand up yeah, so we please. can raise, yeah, yeah. give you thanks for that. Bill Beaton, Grace, Marble Rees, Raphael. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And I would like to thank you also, staff, Sam, and the uh, connectional, uh, connectional ministry uh, staff worked very hard for us and helped us, not only that, but to prepare this document. So, those who did it, I, I like to say thank you, and Jim Wells, who was the previous 
uh, chairperson. He did a good job and helped us out, so I'd like to say thank you. And I would like to express my thanks to all volunteers who served last year. And thank you to all volunteers who have come forward this year to show our conference during 2018. Thank you, and thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Dominique. Thank you. <laughs> now our board board and ministry chair, um, Rebecca here, okay, guide us so that we can do historic questions with them. Good afternoon. Good As afternoon. the bishop said, I'm Rebecca Henry, co-chair of the Board of Ordained Ministry. And I share in the work of many others in helping to recognize and affirm the work of the Holy Spirit in individuals who are feeling called into ministry and who have felt that affirmation from local congregations and from others in their life who have affirmed the gifts and the graces that they have seen in these persons. And so in just a few hours, we will have the privilege of being in worship together and in celebrating the ordination and the reception of these individuals into full membership in the Wisconsin Annual Conference. This year, we will be inviting Susan, Cecile, Amen to be ordained as a deacon and received into full membership. We'll invite you to come forward as I read your name. Those to be ordained as elders and received into full membership are Pune An Peace Kim, Jeffrey A. Meyer, Susan Marie Offler, and Angela Beth Utter. And then those persons whose orders will be recognized as elders and who will be received in full membership are Tua Thomas Tao, Myun Hun Han, and Sukhyun Jun. The historic examination for the mission into full connection that Bishop as a chief pastor shall engage those who seek to be admitted in serious self-searching and prayer to prepare them for their examination before the conference. At the time of examination, the bishop shall also explain to the conference the historic nature of following questions and seek to interpret their spirit and intent. The question are these and any others that may be thought necessary. Hmm. I, did. I didn't know that that last sentence that I had. Hmm. <laughs> Have you faith in Christ? Yes. yes. Can you hear? No. Oh no! Yes. Yes. <laughs> are you going to? Are you going on to perfection? Yes. yes. With God's help. With God's With help. God's help. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Do you expect it to be made perfect in love in this life? Yes. 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 Are you honestly striving after it? Yes. yes. Are you reserved to devote yourself wholly to God and His work? Yes. Do you know the general rule of our church? Yes. yes. Spell it. R U L E. They they all did it. You know. You heard it. <laughs> Will you keep them? Yes. yes. Have you studied it, the doctrine of the United Methodist Church? Yes. yes. After full examination, do you believe that doctrine are in harmony with your holy scriptures? Yes. yes. Will you preach and maintain them? Yes. yes. 
Have you studied our form of church discipline and polity? Yes. yes. Do you approve our church government and polity? Yes. yes. Will you support and maintain them? Yes. yes. Will you diligently instruct children in every place? Yes. yes. So that means when you assign a church no Sunday school, then you're going to build a Sunday school, right? Yes. 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 With God's if, help. With God's help, all right? All right. <laughs> Will you visit from house to house? Yes. yes. And if you say diligently, yes. Hmm? Will you recommend fasting or abstentions and both by precept and example? Yes. yes. All right. Are you determined to employ all your time in the work of God? Yes. No side job. <laughs> no car wash. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Are you in depth so as to embrace you in your work? No. 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 I know at the clergy session, one brother say that uh, when Bishop Jesse do a time, before asking this, he say, I confess I am in trouble in this, as a bishop himself. Well, I'm not just so easily past that pull, too. Will you observe the following direction? Be diligent. Yes. Yes. Never be unemployed. Never be trifling, uh, triflingly employed. Never trifle away time. Neither spend any more time in any one place than is strictly necessary. Be punctual. Even statistical table and appointment giving and, and uh, all the detail of administration in the church work. Yes. yes. Punctual. Be punctual. Do everything exactly at a time. Do not mend our rule, but keep them. Not for wrath, but uh, for the conscience' sake. Would you yes. say yes? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Would you lift your hands to them and blessing this moment? They are, we have passed it, this uh, historic gem, but they need our support. Loving and gracious God, what a wonderful moment that we have formed these leaders, these servant leaders, to be a full member of this conference, deacon and elders, marvelous God, empower them, enable them, constantly striving for the, the spiritual holiness and even perfection they may pursue. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for, yes. All right, you may go back. Let us welcome them. It is always not enough to really thanking the community, the local church, the parents, family, friends, and then many pastors who mentored these people, seminary community, and many others. I know this afternoon we will do celebrate ordination. Many of them come from far, from overseas, to be here to celebrate, and many one who pray and are quietly behind for their work. And I also need to name it one even candidate this time, that one of the member fully, entirely support their seminary education for one of the ordinance in this time. 
and her name is uh, Meredith. They say hard to read it, the name, the Kins Kisnowski. Can you name it that? Kisnowski. Kisnowski. That she is the one who sponsored it, a seminary student, and an entirety of the financial support that person did it. Would you give hands in Appleton, Wisconsin? <laughs> Truly, mother leadership that we have in among our community, and thank you. By the way, that's a Jeffrey, the tall guy we have. <laughs> and you will curious about how we can ordain him. He's too tall. <laughs> but he's so young. <laughs> All right. John Lusson and Gayer and Mary Barson, why don't you come up and health and welfare ministry? Good afternoon, Bishop. Good afternoon. John. Good afternoon, conference. Good afternoon. I want to start by thanking you as an annual conference. Uh, the committee represents 14 ministries from Milwaukee to Hudson, from Janesville to Superior, uh, fulfilling three primary purposes, ministry to the poor, health, particularly with older adults, as well as leadership development. We are involved in all of those things. Today we are renewing uh, three covenants with our health and welfare ministries. Uh, it's kind of a unique opportunity because we have three relatively new leaders uh, of our organizations and their organizations are being recognized today. We're going to start with United Methodist Hospitals Ministry and if we can, and if we can cue that video. My name is Ann Scott, and I serve as the chaplain of the United Methodist Hospitals Ministry. This chaplaincy is an outreach ministry of the Wisconsin Annual Conference and is part of the Health and Welfare Committee. It provides a vital, healing, and supportive connection to United Methodists and their churches. As a chaplain, I bring spiritual care and comfort to United Methodists who are patients in the Madison hospitals. These hospitals include SSM St. Mary's Hospital, Unity Point Health Meritor Hospital, and university hospital and clinics that include American Family Children's Hospital and the new UW Health American Center on Madison's east side. This ministry has been in existence for over 50 years. Beginning in the 1960s, its chaplains have provided a wide range of support and connection for United Methodists who are often facing difficult medical challenges. I offer prayer, a listening presence, scripture, meaningful conversation, and advocacy to patients as well as to their families. When a person's home pastor is unable to visit, and with the patient's permission, I become that bridge of communication and support to and from the pastor and the congregation. Recently, I saw a woman with an end-of-life diagnosis. She shared with me that she was concerned about her overworked daughter, who was single-parenting her 14-year-old granddaughter. We talked about her connection to the local church and she said she hadn't been there in a long time because she couldn't sit in the pews anymore. I asked if she'd like me to contact the pastor to visit her when she was discharged from the hospital and she smiled and said she would. I contacted the pastor and shared the patient's information and the pastor followed up with a visit including communion and she now has a church family caring for her even though she is unable to attend church. Some of the patients identify as Methodist, but have no current church home or pastor. And this is an opportunity for me to listen to their stories and to extend the offer of a prayer. 
Sometimes there is a desire on the part of the patient to find a new church home or to reconnect with their congregation back home in their community. This happened recently when I visited at UW Health at the American Center with a patient who was recovering from surgery. He shared with me that he had recently moved to the Madison area and hadn't yet found a home church. We talked about his experience of church and I offered the names of some churches he might like to visit. He thanked me for the referral and he said he would be visiting some of them soon. I'm blessed with this opportunity to share this healing ministry with the United Methodist Churches in Wisconsin. I welcome your invitation to come and share about this ministry with your local congregation. Funding for this ministry comes through Wisconsin Conference Apportionments. However, most of the financial support comes directly from local churches as well as individuals. We count on your support. It's essential. Thank you for sharing your prayers and your gifts as we all work together for health and healing and wholeness for all God's people. We're very pleased, Anne, to have you join us in this capacity shortly after annual conference last year. And Bishop, we claim you as one of our own yes. as well, as you saw in the video. Yes. So, 92, I was. 92. Yes. yes. So before us is action item 21 on page 19, and the committee puts this action before you. This is the covenant of affiliation with the hospital's ministry, and just a word about what we are doing. Uh, the discipline as of 2012 requires us to review and renew these covenants every four years. We have started a, a cycle of doing three to four ministries a year. Uh, so this is one of the three this year. So action item 21 is before you. All right, action item 21 in front of you. Are you ready to vote? Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor to support this uh, beautiful ministry and in the item expressed in item 21, would you raise your hand? Lower hand, those opposed, raise your hand. Abstention, okay, motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and I know that uh, earlier I received a note from the Anne that can we offer a prayer for Jacob Lenihak, 22 years old young man who are critically injured in a car accident, car and motorcycle accident. He was Airplane to Janesville to UW Hospital yesterday afternoon. His family is members of UMC. This young man, Jacob, is a very good friend with the kids from Milton. And this is the concern I received it. So it's a moment that we may remember this young man for the recovery. So let's have a moment of silence. The healing God, the Holy Spirit. Bless Jacob for his healing and recovery. All the medical team and all the family members, especially the church. May they be a hands of healing for, for your work. Blessing for this and especially for the hospital and chaplain's ministries around the Madison area. In Christ we pray, amen. Thank you. Amen. Another new leader is David Tank at Cedarcrest. And can we cue the Cedarcrest video, please? Yeah. <laughs> What Cedarcrest offers is a wonderful place for our residents to live. It's the staff and volunteers working together to make that experience the best for our senior adults that live at Cedarcrest. Once you make the decision to come to Cedarcrest, 
no matter what happens to you health-wise, you need assistance, assistance living, you need to go into health care, your needs are met all in one facility. You don't have to be concerned with packing up at some point in your life and moving to another facility for, for care. So you always stay in that familiar environment once you make the decision. I would say when you walk into Cedar Crest, you know that this is their home. You see staff working together to make it a place where they love living. They have choices, they have dignity in living in Cedar Crest. There's plenty of chance for me to be independent if I want to be independent, if I want to go for a walk outside. There's beautiful facilities to walk and have it be quiet. If I want to be with people, there are plenty of places for me to be with people, so it allows me to be me. People are so helpful and so friendly. They will stop whatever they're doing if they see somebody needs a little help with something, but all is friendliness and helpfulness. It fulfilled one of the things that we saw in our future. We knew that we would need some care in the future, and Cedar Crest provides that option that we were looking for. Before us then is action item 22, which is found on page 22. Um, this is the covenant for Cedar Crest, and I have to tell you that David, along with you, was seeing this video for the first time. He delegated this task to his team, and so uh, I hope they did a good job for you. <laughs> so item 22 is before you. All right, item 22 in front of you. Any discussion? Are you ready to vote to affirm this uh, action item in those who are in favor to support this and raise your hand. Lowell hand, those opposed? Any abstention? Motion is carried. It. And thank you, and thank you for your leadership, and we will pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, another new leader. Uh, for Hillcrest Family Services in Dubuque, Iowa, although serving many families and children in southwest Wisconsin. Uh, you've been, well, you've been on the job in this role briefly, but you've been with the organization for how many years? Eleven. Eleven. So not exactly new, but certainly new role. Uh, you will find the covenant, action item 23, on page 24. And Bishop, we place that in your hands. All right. Action 23. In front of you, any discussion? Okay, are you ready to vote? Those in favor to support, raise your hand. Lord and those in not, not um, in opposition, any rain? Okay, in any abstention? Okay, motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Congratulations. And I'd like to make two special mentions, mentions of people who are not here. Uh, Mike Bonello, the longtime executive director of the Morrill Memorial Home, mm -hmm. is retiring. We were hopeful oh. that he would be with us here today for recognition. But uh, let's give him a round of applause that he might hear all the way over. All right. Up. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> and I also want to extend special recognition to George Leuterman from United Methodist Ch uh, Children's Services, another new leader. Uh, I don't believe he's in the house at the moment. And also Mac Weddle uh, from Northcott Neighborhood House for the exceptional work they have done over the last year in the Sherman Park area of Milwaukee in the aftermath of that situation. Uh, truly wonderful work recognized in the local media, uh, work done on your behalf as the church's presence in that area. And we thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank Bishop. you, John. And I've been so uh, inspired and also that supported it by this organization. And I visit every place and we are very delightfully blessed by this all different health and welfare organization and we are proud to carry it on this special relationship and John you and your community did a beautiful job thank you 
Thank you. Continuing, Gayle, yes. continuing with Board of Global Ministries, um, things we, we know that health and welfare is a big part of Board of Global Ministries, but it's not the only thing. And one of the um, ways of trying to encourage people to realize the broad spectrum, the rainbow of um, possibilities within Board of Global Ministries is our rainbow covenant. And um, at this time, I just want to take time to recognize those 18 churches which have um, participated this year and encourage everyone to take a look at the um, flyer that was in your packet that explains that Rainbow Covenant is an opportunity to learn about missions and support missions through um, local all the way through international and missionaries and um, conference-wide and national. Um, those churches who are being recognized, there were um, eight last year, we are now have 18. Very briefly, they are Bayview, Bristol, Brown Deer, Christ in Watertown, Crystal Lake in, um, and Waupun, Emmanuel in Appleton, Fenimore, First in Nina Menasha, Liberty Pole, Lodi, New Centerville, Peace in Kakana, Salem in Fond du Lac, Trinity Elk Mound, um, Church of the Pines in Manaqua, Wesley in Oshkosh, Wesley Chapel in Bristol, and Yorkville United Methodist. And I just want to lift them up because they worked to make sure that they were paying their apportionments, that they were participating locally on a conference, on a national, on an international level, that they supported UMCOR, that they actually worked with some missionaries, and that they took time to um, develop relationship through the um, IMT, which is in here, which is actually in mission together. I, and I'm sorry when I use those acronyms. I know I shouldn't. Um, but thank you to those 18 churches. We have gone from three churches to eight churches to 18 churches participating. So we hope to double that again mm -hmm. next year. But thank you to all who, are, who participated. Thanks. Thank you, Gail, and excellent. Those are all churches we are. Thank you. And Mary's going to introduce some folks. Okay. Good afternoon. I am Mary Balson, and I am the chairman of the Mission Motivation uh, Committee of the Board of Global Ministries, and it's our job to try to promote uh, involvement in missions, in, uh, not only in our local churches, but in our conference and in the world. And one of the things that we do, as Gail just said, is the uh, Rainbow Covenant program. And tomorrow, we're going to have a learning day um, opportunity. It's at one o'clock. It's called the Spectrum of Opportunity. And uh, we have invited um, several missionaries, people who work in the mission field. Uh, they've been with us so far this uh, annual conference and will be speaking tomorrow at that um, Learning Day event. And so I'd like to introduce them to you. Um, I'll just slide down. So you can see. Okay. All right. Uh, this person right here is David Phipps. Raise your hand so they know you. Okay. David Phipps is the In Mission Together Coordinator for West Africa. So if you want to know more about the In Mission Together program, which is an initiative that helps to build, to help uh, develop, develop stronger churches starting at the mission level and help them to become self-supporting. So David Phipps, uh, we have the mission coordinators for the uh, North Central Jurisdiction, Steve and Gail Quigg, and they've been out here manning the Global Ministries table. Many of you already know uh, Paul Webster uh, from Majula Falls uh, Agricultural Center in Zambia, and he will be a part of the discussion tomorrow, as will his friend, Sylvester, okay? Uh, we also have um, Tammy Coons, who works for North Central Jurisdiction 
and she is the volunteer and mission coordinator. And we have Jason Fraser, and he works for the North Central Jurisdiction Disaster Response team. So all of these, all of these resources are here and available for you. Uh, they will be here the rest of the day and they will be here tomorrow. So I thank you very much. Let us welcome and appreciate their work here among us and thank you. We'd like to recognize one of our heroes. Paul Webster, why didn't you come here? <laughs> I know we were thanking many people in this area, but Paul, we want to thank you. Thank you in a deepest appreciation for your dedicated service as a missionary to Mozilla Fall Agriculture Center. We recognize and honor Paul Webster May God bless you richly. June 17, 2017, Wisconsin Annual Conference, Bishop Hsu Jung. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you need to speak. A little bit. Oh. Thank you. Okay. I've been trained never to step on your applause, and that is, it's very heartfelt that, that I'm known by so many people, and I'm only ashamed that I can't always remember all of you. And uh, it's so important to know that people not only have been giving money and, and giving support to our project, but giving prayer. Uh, and, and I'm constantly told that people are praying for me and for our project, and we know prayers are answered. Um, it is a great honor. Uh, I've been a lifelong Methodist and, a, and a, uh, belong to it, still uh, have a home church here in Wisconsin, and uh, I'm just very, very uh, honored uh, that uh, I'm so highly thought of here by this conference. And, and I want to thank our bishop again, uh, also someone who is very mission-minded. Uh, this is how we do God's work in the world. Uh, this is what Christ uh, taught us to do. And when we uh, do God's work, uh, the blessings come back to each one of us. And uh, if we want to see church growth in Wisconsin, think about that church growth in Africa and Southeast Asia and every place where our church has been reaching out and making a difference in the world. Thank you. It's a great honor, our congregation everywhere, to remember you and your project. And you've been done so many great work with the self-sacrifice. So we honor that. Now let's move on to our cabinet address. And our Dean Deborah Thompson will come and lead. Let us welcome Deborah and the, all the cabinet members. Would you give hands to them? Thank you, Bishop. Uh, before I start the cabinet address, we have a couple of action items. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'm going to ask uh, Reverend Dr. Kate Jones to come and help me with... Uh, these action items. All right. Thank you, Deborah. Bishop, annual conference, it is good to be here with you. We have uh, th uh, three action items to present to you um, that are found in your packet. The first one is um, action item 13. And it looks like I left my packet on the table. Um, but it is before you. I think it's, what, on page 10. Thank you. We can't work alone, can we? And um, that um, 
This item basically just codifies things that are already being done. This is the way that we're, we are operating. We wanted to put it into the, into the policy so that you would know what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I would move this um, item, item 13. All right, action item 10. 13 is in front of you. Title 4, proposed change of the conference moving policy. Okay. Is there any discussion? Are you ready to vote for this? Okay. Those in favor to prove this, would you raise your hand? Lower hand? Does oppose? Raise your hand. Any abstention? Okay. Motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, we now move on to action item number 14. Um, and this, again, is both editorial and uh, codifying work that's already being done. Um, it puts sabbatical Sunday in, it takes it out of the salary termination section because sabbatical Sunday has nothing to do with uh, salary termination and puts it in its own section and then it codifies um, um, by addition the practices around uh, clergy sick leave and family time off. Okay, action item is 14 in front of you. Any question or any discussion? Are you ready to vote? Those in favor, would you raise your hand? Lower hand. Those opposed, raise your hand. So make sure you have the most current, so in any abstention? So All right, right. motion is carried. And this is the extra we add on after. All right, um, and then turning to action item number 15, um, this one, uh, Bishop, there were two uh, motions um, that were made um, to modify this. One was the one that Paul um, um, Nipko um, uh, spoke to you about earlier. The cabinet has in exchange for his withdrawal of that motion, accepted as a friendly amendment the addition of the line um, equitable um, and the deletion of the line equity um, so that um, the sharing of the costs need not be exactly equal if that's not what is equitable. All right, so Paul Nipko's uh Friendly amendment was adopted into for this whole action item, as you explained it. And then additionally, um, um, Mark um, Gilbert has um, um, actually um, requested an amendment as well, um, amending lines 19, 21, and 25. The cabinet has accepted the addition of line 25 as a friendly amendment. And uh, so um, we would need to uh, call on uh, Mark for his um, amendments. Um, All right, so you already worked on that before, huh? Yes, Coming we, to this. We did Great. a little holy conferencing, Bishop. Good, thank you. All right, All right. microphone eight. Uh, could we get just a little bit of clarification as you're talking, please? Um, we're using paper, and there's two pages with two sets of numbers, so I'm not sure which pages there were made the amendments to, so I can notice them. Okay, let me just invite it to the secretary to clarify two things. The... One moment. I thought he's always ready. <laughs> The first correction that was accepted, which was the motion coming from the motion that Paul Nipko made, refers to workbook page 13, near the bottom of that page, in item 60.15.00, in the first line of that paragraph, which would actually be line 37 on the page, 
delete the word equally at the end of that line and replace it with the word equitably. So it would read the responsibility to provide housing for the pastor and spouse and or family should be shared equitably by all congregations' charges involved. The motion that was uh, referred to that will be coming from Mark Gilbert in line 25 on that page, page 13, add the phrase, previously documented by trustees and SPRC in annual parsonage review. So as I understand it, that would read, following the words, ordinary wear and tear, previously documented by trustees and SPRC in annual parsonage review. And then, Mark, I presume you're going to make uh, a motion to amend lines 19 and 21 as it's shown on the screen. Is that correct? Okay, over here at microphone. All right. So, yes, and now we are the two corrected it, amendment, friendly amendment updated. And now, number four microphone, recognize you. Thank you, Bishop. Uh, Pastor Mark Gilbert, elder at Minocqua Church of the Pines. Um, and I would uh, move those, uh, uh, those amendments to add to line 19 and 21 on page 13 um, to um, add the words SPRC uh, to those lines. All right, adding the SPRC. So it can be a friendly amendment or would you like to test? Well, the cabinet actually ha has had some brief discussion about that and where there are parsonage committees and there's an SPRC member that's a part of that, that amendment makes sense, but other members of the cabinet noted that the, the care for the parsonage is really within the role and responsibility of the trustees. I see. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Yes, yeah, so why don't you read it? If the amendment that Mark is proposing is approved, those paragraph 60.11.1 sub G would conclude and written approval of the trustees and SPRC. That's line 19 on page 13. And then subparagraph H, line 21, would read written approval of the trustees and the SPRC. All right. I need a second for that. All right, seconded. You speak. Um, yes, I would speak to that, that uh, I believe elsewhere in the policy, our housing policy, I don't have it fully in front of me. And as well in the Book of Discipline, it indicates that the SPRC is responsible to, with the trustees, provide uh, that the uh, pastors are caring for the parsonage uh, on an annual basis. And the SPRC is required to participate in the annual walkthrough. So even if there is not a uh, parsonage subcommittee, um, that the SPRC is involved in caring for the parsonages of our congregations. Um, and that the parsonages are, as w they are physical assets of our churches, but they are also part of the compensation, overall compensation packages offered to pastors, um, in which that, uh, in my understanding, would put that under the, uh, the care of the SPRC. All and right. so I just was wanting to make sure that the SPRC was involved in the policies and the use of the, uh, of the parsonages by the pastor. Thank you. Amendment that line, those two line, we adding the NSPRC is in front of you. Any discussion? Are you ready to vote uh, for the amended amendment we are talking about right now? So those in favor for this amendment, would you raise your hand? Lowell hand. Those opposed, raise your hand. Lowell hand. Those abstention? None. Yes, uh, amendment carried it. So now amended it, main motion, amended it all things in front of you. Any discussion? Okay, are you ready to vote? Okay, those in favor? Oh, no. okay, yes, microphone seven. They recognize you, microphone seven. Thank you, uh, Olivia Huang from First United Methodist Church in Madison. 
Um, I have a um, question and possibly a friendly amendment, well, uh, um, uh, or an amendment to, uh, on page 13, 601500, housing for clergy couples. My concern is specifically with regard to the sentence that reads, clergy couples living together may not receive two full housing allowances. Um, I, while I understand a, a, a large portion of the logic for this, my concern is that um, housing allowances are considered to be a total or part of the total compensation for clergy members and sort of in differentiating that only one clergy member would receive a full housing allowance, it essentially places less value on the secondary member in that household, the secondary clergy member. And so my concern is that we're devaluing one member in that clergy couple. Okay. I think you did. Uh, would you answer that or? Well, I think, Bishop, this has been our long-standing policy, and we were codifying what has been in, um, in place. Um, there are times when the arrangement has to be approved by the cabinet because the pastors are serving in places that are too far apart for them to live together. But where, where they are able to live together, um, two housing allowances is kind of a double dipping. I think this is also denominational practice as a whole, and then both an agency also step is required. It like I am, my spouse is a discipleship step member in Nashville because I've been supported in housing from Wisconsin Conference. She is not. That's a general policy that we are working on. So I hope that is answer for you. Um, it I, my understanding is that if something that is underlined is a new addition, so this is just taking something that's already a practice policy and, and codifying that into essentially the relative statute? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we will probably, uh, if we are passing this here, I don't know, we might probably be checking on the general conference, any other rule involving it here. So, yes. Okay. Are you satisfying? Uh, no, I'm not entirely satisfied, but I, um, I mean, I would propose an amendment to strike that line or to amend that line to suggest that clergy couples could elect to decline one of the housing allowances, um, but... Okay, I think you can, you can try, but I think sure. if, even though we passed it here, maybe it required to examine whole other things. Sure. I, I would like to propose the, the amendment to strike that particular Okay, line. amendment to strike out that section. Okay. All right, it's an amendment in front of you. Are you ready to vote? Any discussion? Okay, point of order, yes. Go to microphone seven. Don't you need a second for that? Oh, I thought I did it, no? I didn't hear it. Okay. All right, I will ask uh, probably a uh, second for that. Oh, there is a second. All right, thank you. So, thank you. Is there any discussion? All right, microphone number uh, six, you go. Uh, five, maybe. Five is better. Diana Ziegler, lay leader for New Life United Methodist Church in Seymour. I am speaking against the amendment. I don't think that it that allowing only one housing allowance for a pastoral couple devalues either one of them. They are both still receiving housing as part of their package. All right, thank you. One against, yes, go to seven. Wendy Nitz, Oak Creek Community United Methodist Church, clergy. Question, um, does the pension affect, uh, the pension that the pastor who is not getting housing allowance, is that affected? Yes. 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 And that is injustice. And so I support striking this right, and then two. addressing it at the general conference right. also. Mm -hmm. Two against, okay. Microphone three.
Carolyn Saunders, clergy, Osceola. The first sentence of this might be an amendment, Bishop. Is that appropriate? In the line of strikeout, that's related to that amendment? Yes. Okay. You so, can. the first sentence of the first sentence of the paragraph in question says the responsibility to provide housing for the pastor and spouse and or family should be shared equitably by all congregations charges involved. And then it is in the second sentence that it says clergy couples living together may not receive two full housing allowances. I wonder if we were to put, and it, it doesn't read very well, but I wonder if we were to put the second sentence first and then add to what is currently the first sentence, the responsibility to provide housing for the pastor and spouse and the and or family or and or clergy couples should be shared equitably by all congregations charges involved what we've done is we state that we're not going to give two full housing allowances to clergy couples and then in the second sentence we say that it's a responsibility to provide equitably among all of the charges and if we included the words for clergy couples we'd kind of be resolving the confusion. I think that's what this is more than anything. For me, it's not, it's not in... Okay, don't speak. I think that's clear. Is there a second? Okay, seconded. You can speak now. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. I understand that, that all of the conversation around it feels like we are putting down one clergy person versus the other and the issue around pensions. But I, I think it's kind of covered in the first sentence if we just change the language and maybe reorder the paragraph. And Kate, being a lawyer, you might be able to figure out that language for us. <laughs> well, it seems like your suggestion would, it makes good sense to me. Um, I think we need to writing from you so the secretary team, we needed to do that. So, okay. Okay, writing for me. Yes, uh, Steve, uh, go to microphone three. Are you going to speak on this amendment? Amended it amendment? <laughs> Bishop, I've got to kind of confess, I'm lost track of where we're at on amendments on amendments. Um, what, what I wanted to attempt to do, and Bill can call me, tell me I'm crazy, um, I wanted to actually introduce a new motion to refer section 60.15.00 as it's in here to the Joint Board of Pensions to be in consultation with the cabinet and come back with a new version of it to be considered next day in our conference. There's lots of implications around pensions that have been lifted. There's lots of implications around equitably. There, the housing for general agencies, which I was under for a number of years, works differently. It, it works differently at the annual conference. And there's all sorts of issues around equitably for um, clergy couples. So let's get it sorted out. We, it's difficult to operate as a committee of a whole. So okay. I, I want to refer this to the joint board. All right. Motion to refer it to the joint board. Would, uh, or just this paragraph or just, oh, just that paragraph. Okay. All right. Are you ready to vote for the referrer at this moment? Yes. Oh, do we have second? We have second, yes, many second, all right. Okay, now right, let's just move on to the referral. Those in favor to... All right, yes, microphone one. Now you need to speak only for referral matter. Bill Steimling from the Hoke United Methodist Church, the multiple point charge. Things were going so well, Bishop. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Great. I, I think that this raises a multi 
point concern. Mm. Because we start dealing now with equitable and housing for the small churches that are in multiple point charges, insurance for clergy couples raises the same issue. Are we going to double up the insurances as well as the housing allowance? I raise that as a point of concern. If we're going to deal with one, let's deal with all. All right, so that referral in will be related to. May put a microphone six. Diane Phil Huber, clergy, uh, Point at Inch, North Windsor United Methodist Church. I'd like to speak to the issue in general as well as Bill's comments. Just the, no, just the referral. The referral, yes, yes, I'm speaking to the referral. Mm -hmm. I think we also need to make sure whatever is included in this is compatible with the IRS and therefore I speak in favor of the referral so that the joint board can be very clear on whatever language is used is appropriately interpreted within IRS guidelines. All right, thank you. Can I speak to Bill's comment or not? Uh, not, not that, I think okay. I save that. Let's just vote on referral now. If you turn it down, then we're going to go back on amended amendment. So those in favor to support the referral, would you raise your hand? Lower hand. Those opposed, raise your hand. Lower hand. Any exemption? Okay, motion is referred. Thank you. Yes. So now rest of this whole yeah. action item you're going to I go. I think then we're ready to uh, vote on action item 15 unless there is. All right. Action item 15. Without that one, yes, microphone eight. Jane Ann McIntosh, Appleton First, uh, clergy. And um, I refer to page 12, somewhere around th line 32, where it says carpets or rugs. Um, I, at my previous appointment, I was in a church that was close to 100 years old and had lovely wood floors. I also have health issues with carpets and uh, what happens with them. I would suggest, encourage that perhaps we could strike that line and as not being minimum or mandatory. Are you suggesting to any specific an amendment? Um, a, a friendly suggestion that it, could that line be removed? Well, um. it's that's currently part of the policy that exists. Okay. So why don't we go to microphone one? Dan Schwerin, Waukesha first. Might we use the word flooring because the responsibility is on the one providing the parsonage? We're talking about flooring and having something furnished that way. All right, so then just to simply, that can be cover everything. All right, that's a good language. Your friendly amendment is here. Any other discussion? Are you ready to vote? Okay, those in favor of this motion, action item 15, raise your hand. Lower hand, those opposed, raise your hand. Lower hand, any abstention, motion is carried. Thank you. You know, there are some conference actually they gave it up that whole moving policy even to a uh, whole church, local church. The conference not dealing with it anymore. It's a many conference differently practice in different ways. So I know that it, I'm attentive about your discussion, but this is a matter that maybe more and more we need to be, be more communicatable together. Okay, so thank you. Those. All right, thank you for the action item that you did it, good. Deborah we Thompson, Dean, yes. We have one more action item. You have uh, one more. Mm -hmm. Action item 28, you have, I don't know, I don't know if I'm colored blind, but I don't know if this is blue or green, what is blue? Blue. Bl blue. A blue sheet that was on your table and then in your packet is a litany for action item 28 is an order uh, is a resolution on a discontinuation of the Milwaukee Aldersgate United Methodist Church so 
State the motion. The, the action item is, is before you and because of time. Therefore, be it resolved that the Wisconsin Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church meeting June 16th through 18th, 2017 at Middleton, Wisconsin declares that Milwaukee Aldersgate United Methodist Church discontinued as July 1st, 2017 and approves the transfer of the building to Milwaukee Urban Poema, a new church start for their future growth. Be it further resolved that all remaining assets be distributed according to conference policy. All right, that is the action item 28 in front of you. Any discussion? All right, are you ready to vote? Okay. Those in favor, would you raise your hand? Lower hand, those opposed, raise your hand. All right. Yes, yes, uh, that's a blind spot, you see yes. it, so I cannot see that. Apologize. Bishop Bench, Wareen Waukesha. I, my only question about that is so many churches have been locked in residential areas that it has harmed their future ministry. Could you just say a word about how that neighborhood location helps the Urban Poema ministry thrive? Okay. Urban Poema it, uh, Church is um, one of our new church starts that is growing. They are uh, meeting with over a hundred uh, people and worship, and they have ha had uh, various difficulties. Uh, they're in their third place of worship for worship site. They will. They are. Um, growing all across the city. The people are coming from all across the city and um, they are looking at multiple sites. They see this as their uh, northwest site. So this will just be one of the sites for uh, the Urban Poima Church. All right. Any other comment? Then I think we are back to the vote to approve. All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Same sign. Any abstentions? And thank you, Deborah. Also, there is a, a short litany in, in your... I'd like for pastors and members who have uh, once been a part of the Aldersgate uh, church in Milwaukee to, to stand as we share in this litany. The, t the time has come for the Wisconsin Annual Conference with the guidance of the Holy Spirit to celebrate and give thanks for the many years of ministry of God's holy word and sacrament and for the comfort and strengthening of God's people for the work of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. The cabinet and bishop have approved the discontinuation of this congregation and we recommend this action to this, ses to this session of the Wisconsin Annual Conference. Aldersgate United Methodist Church, Milwaukee. We approve this discontinuation with sadness and gratitude. We share the sadness of those who remain to make the decision to discontinue, and we are grateful for their faithfulness and willingness to make a difficult decision. As generations have prayed their prayers, sung God's praises, received the word, celebrated the sacraments, and been nurtured through their journey of faith. We give God the thanks and praise. We are a people of hope, and we know that the resources remaining from the discontinued congregation will be reinvested in new ways to bring people of all ages, races, nations, and languages into relationship with Jesus Christ. 
So from the former will come new opportunities to serve God and God's people in the world. Let us pray together. O oh God, God, in your, your great, great goodness, goodness, you, you have, have blessed, blessed the many ministries carried out through this congregation. congregation. We, we pray that you greatly bless the many ministries in your ongoing, ongoing church through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Beautiful Bishop, beautiful guests, and beautiful brothers and sisters and Christ. I greet you in the name of the one who calls us into service of love and care for one another as we seek together to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. I want to begin by thanking you for your renewed dedication to serve this great faith community we call Wisconsin Conference. Thank you for giving of yourselves, your gifts, your service and witness so that we can be one with Christ. Galatians 3, 26 to 29 says, and I read, but now you have arrived at your destination. By faith in Christ, you are in direct relationship with God. Your baptism in Christ was not just washing you up for a fresh start, it's also involved dressing you in an adult faith wardrobe, wardrobe Christ life, the fulfillment of God's original promise. In Christ's family, there can be no division into Jew and no Jew slave and free, male and female. Among us, you are all equal. That is, we are all in a common relationship with Jesus Christ. Also, since you are Christ's family, then you are Abraham's famous descendants, heirs according to the covenant promise. As we look for the Christ in each other, we become Christ's beautiful family in which we acknowledge and embrace each other fully. Individually and collectively, we thrive when we are lovingly nurtured by our family of faith. In the coming years, let us go forth growing together so that we may be one with Christ. This past year in July, we were delighted and thrilled at the North Central Jurisdictional Conference consecration service of the five new bishops when the appointment was read and we found out that Bishop He So Young. He So Young. Our beautiful bishop and his lovely wife, Eam were returning for another quadrennium to serve with us here in Wisconsin. Let us show our appreciation and gratitude. We can do better than that. In October, along with Bishop and even the cabinet and other leaders of this great conference traveled to Korea for a spiritual pilgrimage and to spend some time with the Dongbu Conference, our sister conference. What a spiritual revival we had. We attended early morning prayer time and worship, received trainings which consisted of the history of the Korean Methodist Church and the various missionaries who served in Korea. We preached, prayed, shared our faith, visited Bishop's hometown, met his uncle, and he shared some interesting stories about our bishop. <laughs> Spoke at an international conference, and we even spent time in the homes of members of our sister conference. During our time in Korea, we experience what radical hospitality truly is. 
It has been rumored that the cabinet used apportionment funds to pay for this trip. We did not. We each paid our own way, and the Korean churches hosted us with our lodging and great food. In November, we, the extended cabinet was invited by the Connectional Table and the Council of Bishops to, to attend a summit to see how our conference mission aligned with the four areas of the ministry focus of the United Methodist Church, which are engaging in ministry with the poor, improving global health, developing principal Christian leaders, creating new and renewed congregations. In Wisconsin, we are in alignment with the United Methodist Church as we imagine Wisconsin anew. We are planting new faith communities, say amen. amen. We are developing new Christian leaders, say amen. amen. We are establishing relationships within our multicultural communities, say amen. amen. You all can say amen louder than that. We are focusing on revitalizing and turning around our churches. Amen. Amen. We are taking risk and standing up for justice and mercy in every corner of the state and nation. Amen. We are helping to provide food for the soul and the body. Amen. And we are in ministry with the poor. We also continue to be excited about our School of Ministry and Green Lake and our time together with each district during Bishop's Clergy Day Apart. Throughout our year, there are various learning events that we encourage you to attend, such as annual district conferences, stewardship workshops, SPRC trainings, laity con convocation, and I know there are so much, so many more. Along with the bishop, the five district superintendents, the assistant to the bishop, the director of connectional ministries, and the director of congregational development are connecting across the Wisconsin Conference to help build missional communities. With the hope of our district strategy team, we are reaching out with God's love and Jesus Christ to new people in every Wisconsin community. You have heard some of the stories, and because we uh, are short on time, I'm just going to give you one from each one of the districts but I may say more because I'm from the Southeast, so, you know. In the North Central District, the new Highway 13 Corridor Hispanic Outreach is one example, in which three congregations are reaching out into the entire region that contains a growing Hispanic population. We are very excited about new and emerging ministries in the Northwest. This includes the Eau Claire Korean, Korean worshiping community, made up of primarily students and young Korean adult, adults. This community shares meals and teach Korean to the children of expatriates and the Korean children adopted into non-Korean families as well as the, the adopted families. After lessons are concluded, they gather for worship and praise at the Chapel Heights United Methodist Church. Eau Claire Korean worshiping community is reaching new people to make new disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. In the Northeast, Oshkosh First African worship continues to grow and serves a large immigrant community. The pure 
New Hope is outgrowing its space and exploring how they can add additional worship service. In the Southeast, we celebrate merging churches, Faith Bridge, Blessed Hope, Shared Ministries, uh, Multicultural um, Worship uh, Albright is a multi ethnic congregation. New Hope Mong welcomed 40 to 50 people from Burma. Dai people who are English Methodists are now worshiping in the church. In the Southwest, we have several churches in the district, in the urban, suburban, and rural areas that are having over a hundred children from their communities involved in vacation Bible schools. And so much more. Throughout Wisconsin, many of our churches are self-motivated to do revitalization with the help of our conference staff and district superintendents. I want to give a special thanks to Don Greer, Sam Rapa, Dan Dick, and Jorge Mayorga for their leadership and training efforts in these areas. We know as district superintendents, our work could not get done without the assistance of our district office managers. So we thank Sherry, Barb, Sue, and Heidi for their work and dedication to our ministry. And to all of the conference staff, thank you for your assistance and always being there for us. Although we did not reach our goal of 85% of apportionments, we have noticed a significant increase in local church givings. So we thank you for your efforts. We stand before you today thanking you for your willingness to continue to dream with us as we prayerfully, faithfully, and lovingly work hard together to realize Imagine Wisconsin anew, for we are one with Christ only as one family. Amen, amen. and amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. And our Dean of the Cabinet, well done. Okay. At this time, Bishop, <clears throat> I need some water. <laughs> At this time, Bishop, I'd like for you and Ian to come forth. Yes, Eam, yes, yes. Somebody pull Eam up, help her come to the stage. <laughs> Sue is gonna make, make the president at Cape Dog. We have heard many stories of both Bishop Jung and Im and their home and their work in the yard. And so rather than giving you cut flowers, we decided to give you Im some flowers that can be planted and replanted and grow in your yard. They are Bishop Purple. <laughs> with a bag that says, do what you love, what makes you happy. And Bishop Jung has been working in some ways. I don't know how many of you have gotten to hear the stories of how he has been working for the unification efforts and missions in North Korea. And so our cabinet has gotten together and given a small gift in a small card to you for that mission work. And so we thank you for that and for your work on our behalf in this world and all that you do. So thank you. May we all thank Bishop Jung for his leadership among us.
The other thing is a little different, but we have been led by Deborah Thompson across two years as our dean in the cabinet, and she has led with humor and grace, with energy, keeping us in line and aligned, and keeping us on task when it's important to do that, and keeping us free and full of energy when it's important to do that. And so we have a small gift. She's going to be taking instead of a medical leave that she took last year accidentally, she's going to be taking a sabbatical leave this summer. So we have a small gift to help her in her meditation and ways of being from our cabinet. Now we're going to have an assignment for the appointment reading now, together. Uh, Bishop, this is the changes of the district on the North Central District since the last annual conference. Chile, Emmanuel. To be supply. Colby. To be supply. Elroy, Waniwak. Wesley, Jacob. Lacrosse, Wesley. Anna, Lisa, Hunter. Marshfield, Zion, Spencer. Hyogwan Kwon. Mozani. Gail Ray. Poisipi Borth. Rebecca Kinshi. Princeton Emanuel. To be supply. Rhinelander first. Case D. Wolf. Rib Falls. Tim Gullia. Rockland. Paul Mesmer. Southbur Oak. To be supply. Stevens Point, St. Paul's, The Springs. Howard J. Hinsman, Dario Hernandez. Tomahawk Spirit. Inson Lee. Wausau First. Jinian McIntosh. Wausau New Life. To be Supply. Wild Rose, Hancock UCC. Pamela Denuter Preview. And Withy. To be Supply. This concludes the appointments in the North Central District since last annual conference. Well done, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Northeast District, Sudelesio District Superintendent. Bishop, these are the changes of appointment since last annual conference. Appleton first. Marcus Evigenas to Elizabeth Whitford. Appleton St. James. Dong Su Lee. Beaverdam Trinity. Sherry Ferret. Campbellsport first. To be supplied. Clintonville. Ann Bullis. El Dorado Salem. Karen, Karen Mykers. Eureka. Peter J. Burke. Fond du Lac Covenant. To be supply. Forest Junction Zion. To be mm -hmm. supply. Yeah. Green Bay, Bethany. Robert K. McClint Mc McClintock. Green Bay, Vida Nueva. To be supply. Greenville Faith. Restore a Inshu Mensa. Mishikat, Zion. To be supply. Nina First. Rebecca A. Henny. Nina, the Family Church, La Nueva Jerusalem. Alison R. Scott. To be supply. Oneida. Dong Su Lee. Ashkash First. Russell R. Freeze. Ashkash Wesley. Mary A. Bursum. Seymour New Life. Mark S. Kleisner. Sheboygan Wesley. Richard L. Orson. Sheboygan Wesley Hispanic Ministry. To be supply. Suring Hickory Gillett Tabor. Rick Heveland. Waldo Trinity. Denise Kwiatkowski. Kwiatkowski. Wapaka First, Crystal Lake. Deanne Wood. Wapan. Deborah S. Hastings. Bishop, this concludes the changes of appointment for the Northeast District. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Northwest District, District Superintendent Kate Kraskri Johns. 
Bishop, these are the appointments in the Northwest District since the last annual conference. Bloomer, New Auburn. Joshua Burzet. Boyceville Wheeler Grace Prairie Farm Faith. To be supply. Kadat. To be supply. Chippewa Falls Zion and Halley. Donar D. Drowding Drowdinger. Eau Claire Hope. Hei Jung Huang. Eau Claire Lake Street. Gerard Paul Morris. Hammond New Centerville. Timothy M. Matei. Mondovi Our Saviors Gilmanton. To be supply. Odena. To be supply. Ridgeland Dallas. To be supply. Bishop, this concludes the changes in the Northwest District since the last annual conference. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Southeast District, Deborah Thompson, District Superintendent. Bishop, these are the appointments since last we met. Brown Deer. Al Allen Rasmussen. Cambridge Willerup. Marvin P. Singh. Cudahy. Dominic D. Israel. East Troy Caldwell, Good Samaritan Shared Ministry, East Troy St. James Caldwell. Nee Wan Her. Fort Atkinson First. Paul D. Johnson. Fort Atkinson Hispanic Ministry. To be supplied. Hartford First. Stephanie Taylor. Hebron. To be supplied. Jefferson Emmanuel. Kalin Dodd Ragenba. Menominee Falls Emmanuel Community. Graham N. West, Douglas Clement. Milwaukee Zao. Jonah Home. New Berlin Agape UM Ministry. To be supplied. Oconomo Walk Watertown Regional Ministry, Oconomo Walk Good Shepherd. Watertown, Christ, Johnson Creek, Concord, Sullivan. Daniel J. Foss, Jeffrey A. Meyer, to be supplied. Orfordville, New Horizon. Jorge Alberto Ochoa, Rongi. Plymouth, to be supplied. Port Washington, Grand Avenue. Janet Husser. Racine, Faith Bridge. Creighton W.K., Karen K. Racine Trinity, Racine Faith. Don R. Francis, Sue Barham. Troy Center. To be supplied. Union Grove. Robert Yabro. Waterford Community, Servant Community. William A. Bush. Waukesha, Salem. Paula Benicki. Wawatosa Bethany Calvary. Mulongo Moyo Mwyompo. Rebecca Jo Schmidt. Wa Wawatosa Wawatosa Avenue. Timothy B. Bulu Christian Christina Isen. West Alice Greenfield Regional Ministry. West Alice Blessed Hope Greenfield Memorial. Elizabeth A. Weed. White Fish Bay. Matthew W. Hardley. Tishinen Mutep Kinje Mumpo. Uh, Mupoyo. Poyo, Poyo. You're not through. <laughs> you got one more. Pyongan Peace Kim. Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know why you always do this. White Water. Regional Ministry, Whitewater, First LaGrange, Richmond, Elkhorn, Bethel. Susan Bresser, Erika Martinez Flores, Donald M. Norman. Bishop, this concludes our appointment changes since last we met. Super job, you're done. Y you did too. <laughs> Southwest District, District Superintendent Scott. Carson. Bishop, here are the changes in the great Southwest District since last annual conference. 
Albany, Thomas Moe, Arlington, to be supplied, Bloom City Boaz, Jenny Starr, Columbus Fall River, Kimberly Abram, Judah Zion, Kelly, Oakley Union, Kelly Ann, Lancaster, Mark Weber, Madison First, Mark Fowler, Tina S. Lang, Brianna Elena, Madison Trinity, Brianna Elena, Monroe United Methodist and Monroe Hispanic Ministry, Randall Booth, Juan Francisco Mayorga, Montfort Cobb, John G. Olivers, Platteville, Brenda K. Whitford, Sherry Weber, Reedsburg, Lavelle Ironton Faith, Reedsburg Hispanic Ministry, Vicki Brentmeyer, Procopio Ariano, Richland, Richland Center Peace, Richland Center Trinity Regional Ministry, G. Wiley Gladney, Schulzburg Centenary, Stanton Bookford, Wisconsin Dells Delton, Davis Corners. Lee Bushwar. Bishop, this concludes the appointment changes for the Southwest District. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Southwest. No. We did it. Okay, extension. Mayor Ga Luis direct uh, Jorge make a whole head whole head Luis Mayor Ga Director of Congregational Development Wisconsin Conference Sun Prairie Wisconsin Jean Enard Nicolas Conference Benefits Officer Wisconsin Conference Sun Prairie Wisconsin Lene Heinz Rebi Chaplain Salvation Army Milwaukee Police Department Chaplains Program, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mark Ware Niger. 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 Mm -hmm. Pastor, Bethlehem United Church of Christ, Maple Lake, Minnesota. Bishop, this concludes the changes to Extension Ministries report. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. I had nothing to do with it. I just read them. <laughs> Let us give a hand to our cabinet. Could you do that to your support? Thank you. So let's move on to the, our budget adoption and implication committee report too. But I think uh, we already done that. So 2018 budget adoption we're going to do. And the cabinet organized it, and the newly elected dean is a Forrest Wells, and the secretary is a Kate Jones. Would you give them a hand so that they can work hard for that? Greetings once again. It is wonderful to be before you as your conference treasurer, and beside me is the Reverend Jack Stubbs. Chair for the Council on Finance and Administration. We had our budget presentation on Friday. There has been a slight change. If you would go to your conference workbook to page 36. In light of the approval of action item number 27, we should change the Discipleship Leadership Council to Connectional Table. All right, just changing title. And that's the only change. Mm -hmm. sure. Yes. I move the adoption of the budget. Okay, the budget is in front of you. The few days you've been ready that. So I ready to vote. Okay, those in favor, raise your hand. Lower hand, those opposed, raise your hand. Lower hand, those abstention, raise your hand. Motion is carried. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Great job, great job. Thank you for CFNA and our Tamara Weem, that our administrator. Yes, any word? Yes. 
We have one more. One more, all right. Action item. Yes, yes. Uh, action item number 12, found on page 8. Page Pro 8. Proposed changes to conference finance policy 10.0.0. And these changes are just to reflect the process that is already in place. All right, so policy change is in front of you. It's not a major uh, change, but it's an editory and also, which is also on it. So, I read it to both. Okay. Are you ready? All right, those in favor, would you raise your hand with support? Lower hand, those opposed? Raise your hand. Abstention? Motion is carried. Right. Thank you, okay. thank you. Let us give hands to them, that's all. Thank you. One more thing, Bishop, if I might say, thank you again to all the churches who were able to support our uh, connectional giving in 2016. If you haven't already picked this up, all the churches who were able to pay 100%, we have certificates of thanks for you. Uh, they were available at pre-conference, but everyone wasn't present to pick them up. So if you would see me at table 50, if table 50 could raise their hand so everyone knows where we are, I would be glad to give this to you and thank you personally. All right, thank you. Excellent. Well, beautiful people. You are done well this annual conference. Seems like we are very graceful, graceful. We are touched by the transformation message from Adam Hamilton. We had many different corners together to affirm our life. So you're ready to adjourn, but yes. Microphone two. Yes. Steve Miller, clergy, Shell Lake, and Sirona. It is most noticeable when it doesn't work. I had the chance earlier to step behind the big TV monitor at stage left and behold a marvel. The wizard said, pay no attention to the man behind the screen, but I think we need to lift up our thanks yes. to the tech team mm -hmm. which allowed us to see and to hear. So thank all you right. very much Let to all Let us give our them. hands to them, many one, our p and included it. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. And my wife and I talked about you guys invited it for our post annual conference party. Our tech team. All right, would you come? Let us have an announcement now. Uh, we need to transit into. Shortly, we're going to be transitioning to the ordination, commissioning, and licensing service. And we need to make some physical changes to this part of the room in order to accommodate that. If you are sitting at the tables numbered 82 through 93, which are the two rows of tables closest to the worship area, you need to remove everything from your table immediately after the closing remarks because those tables will be taken down in order to create extra seating for the ordination and commissioning service. If you leave it on your table, it will be thrown away. All right. Well done, and I again thank you all of you. You've been beautiful, you've been great people. You are my beautiful people. Let us pray together. Thank you so much for the, such a joy and privilege being able to share this time together here as annual conference. Time to connect and be mingled with the dreams and in God's godly dreams and kingdom vision. Your sons and daughters in such a faithful way to lead it this thus far. It is a, such a time to celebrate our connectional church. Even we named it again and again, the global church. Great God, wonder of your love, your majesty of your kingdom. The excitement of journeying together as a God peep, God's people here in Wisconsin. Oh God, continue 
come watch over us all as we continue to follow you even when we move into the local church into the world make us the instrument of your love and peace and justice for all in the name of jesus christ we pray amen 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 once more amen 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 and your conference is adjourned thank you
Make sure you start with the right person. 